Mrs. Barrett. Elmer Carr. At first, I suspected something. He always acted so calm, absent-minded. One day, I heard the back door shut as I entered through the front, and I could see him sneak out back to the smokehouse and run across into the field. And I meant to kill him on sight. That day, walking near Fourth Bridge without a stick or a stone in hand, I suddenly saw him standing there, scared to death, holding his rattle. And all I could do was say, no, don't, don't, don't! Because he aimed and fired at my heart. Silent before the jury. Returning no word to the judge when he asked if I had aught to say against the sentence. Only shaking my head. What could I say to people who thought that a woman of 35 was at fault when her lover of 19 killed her husband? Even though she had said to him over and over, go away, Elmer, go far away. I have maddened your brain with the gift of my body. You will do some terrible thing. And just as I feared, he killed my husband, with which I had nothing to do before God. Silent for 30 years in prison, and the iron gates of Joliet swung as the gray and silent trustees carried me out in a coffin. What but the love of God could have softened and made forgiving the hearts of the people of Spoon River towards me, who wronged the bed of Thomas Merritt and murdered him beside? Or loving hearts that took me in again after 14 years in prison, and helping hands in the church that heard with tears my penitent confession, and took with sacrament the bread and wine. Repent, ye living ones, and rest with God.